So here we go. The 1921 Nobel Prize in Physics went to Albert Einstein. There are every year the Nobel Prize is a big deal. Whoever wins it, that is a huge deal. It says a lot about their work. Then there are prizes that are set apart from the rest that I think in time no one will forget. This is one of those prizes. Officially, according to the official statement, this prize was for his service to theoretical physics and especially for his discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect. That paper was published in 1905, which many people call his career year. It was the landmark year for Einstein. He published four papers in that year that any one of them were, were Nobel laureate level prize-worthy papers. But he did four in the same year. And this is a man that wrote more than 300 peer-reviewed papers. So what sets these four apart and what were they? Well, one was the photoelectric effect. Another was on Brownian motion. One was on the equivalence of matter and energy, E equals mc squared. And the other was on the special theory of relativity. Now, there's two papers on relativity. One is the special theory of relativity, it was written in 1905. And the other is the general theory of relativity, which he published later in 1915. Now, what we're only going to focus on those four papers, but what was so special about those four? Let's tackle these just one at a time. Remember, he officially won the prize for the photoelectric effect, but we're going to get to that one fourth. First, in 1905, one of his most important papers from that year was uh, concerning Brownian motion. But Brownian motion is actually named after somebody else. It turns out it was first described by a botanist named Robert Brown, Brownian, in 1827. He was looking through his microscope at the pollen of a plant called Clarkia puchella in water. Uh, Clark Hippocella, you can see here, is actually sometimes called Pink Fairies, Ragged Robin, Deerhorn Clarkia, probably 10 other names I haven't found. But it all started with that little plant. Just a warning to physicists, I'm going to greatly simplify this, and there will be no math, because I promised. But the mo motion of the water molecules was actually causing the motion of the, the pollen inside that suspension. Now, what does that prove? It, okay, they move in water. So what? Well, the water isn't apparently moving. It's sitting still. It's on the table. It's being looked at through a microscope. But the motion of those, the, those, the pollen inside the water is actually caused by the water molecules themselves because the water is not really stationary. The water molecules are kind of moving around and they move around at a rate based on the temperature. So what Einstein was able to do was to use this phenomena to prove out the second law of thermodynamics, among other things, because he showed that that motion can be understood from the kinetic model for thermal equilibrium, which basically says that heat will always flow from a hotter to a colder area. And using that simple phenomena of pollen in water, he was able to solidify something that wasn't necessarily completely solidified at that particular point in time, but becomes very important for some of his other work. Now, the second and third papers out of that this sort of career year that Einstein had were about the special theory of relativity. And we're going to talk about those at once, all in one clump. So what do we mean by special relativity and how is it different from general relativity? Well, the word special is used when discussing, discussing massive amounts of energy, crazy fast speeds, astronomical distances, and it does not take gravity into account. That was done later in 1915. But the thing that came out of relativity is Einstein's probably his most famous equation outside of the physics world, which is E equals mc squared. Now this letter was actually written by Einstein, so I'm glad to see his handwriting is a little bit worse than mine, so I feel better. But what this tells us is a lot more than just, hey, you know, Einstein was not necessarily the best uh, at penmanship in the world. What it tells us is many things, including you can get a massive amount of energy by destroying a little bit of matter, and that's all off in the nuclear world. Now, what else does it tell us? It tells us an object that approaches the speed of light becomes infinitely massive. It becomes, it has so much mass, you can't move it. It takes an infinite amount of energy to get it to move. So you, you have this problem. You can't get to the speed of light. So how are we going to do interstellar travel? Well, we can't because of relativity. A lot of other reasons we can't do it too, but that's just one of them. So this were the first, second, and third paper in his career year. Now let's get to the one he won the prize for. Finally, his Nobel Prize winning feat was the photoelectric effect. 
Now, that effect is the emission of electrons from a material that's actually caused by bombardment of electromagnetic radiation, such as ultraviolet light, sunlight, in some cases even IR. What happens is electrons will be emitted from the material, and these are now known as photoelectrons. Now, the, the thing about that was, it, it, it's to this day, it's still studied in things like condensed matter physics, solid state, quantum chemistry, and it helps us understand our prop the properties of atoms and molecules and solids. But the experimental result itself disagreed with classical electromagnetism, which predicted that the continuous light wave transfer of energy to electrons, which would then be emitted when they accumulated enough energy. Well, that's not really the way it works. Now, what this photoelectric effect does is, among other things, it finally gives us an understanding of that dual wave particle nature of light and allows us to actually understand how to change light into electricity into you, to, uh, to use for many, many common applications that you have seen every time you go out. And without this understanding, we don't have a lot of the things we, we would have today. We wouldn't have solar panels. We wouldn't have barcode scanners at the grocery store. We wouldn't have digital cameras that we all take pictures with to post on social media. None of that stuff would exist if we didn't fully understand the photoelectric effect. Now, I know everybody thought he won the prize for E equals MC squared and relativity, but it's not the case. The photoelectric effect is what he won it for. And in my opinion, that's the one that really does affect everybody's life on a daily basis, much more than anything else he worked on. And I think that's why the Nobel Committee may have chosen to, to, to award that one. I think they looked at which one's gonna have the most application, and I think they saw this one and went, that's the one, we're gonna give him the prize for that. Now, I hope everybody has enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying the series. I do have a playlist on YouTube uh, with all of them attached to it. So I will continue to do these until we run out of Nobel Prizes. Please consider clicking uh, subscribe and please click, click that like button. It really does help us out with the YouTube algorithms. Everybody have a great day.